My viewers right now are divided into two camps, the PlayStation people and the Commodore people. And I've really managed to enrage the latter because I said that the Commodore is a 3 MHz machine while it's only a 1 MHz machine. This error happened because the 6502 is capable of running at 3 MHz, but the computer itself is not. I'm sorry, but like some people did get very, very, very enraged by this. And I, I like, I mean, extremely. Anyways, today I'm going to connect these two camps together and create a multiplayer game, risking enraging not one camp, but both of them. But I haven't touched the Commodore 64 since last summer, which means it naturally retreated into the corner. And we will have to make a journey to fetch it. There you are. I forgot the power supply. Last time I used the Camaro 64, I again abused my cameraman to create a simple text-based adventure game. But this time around we need something better, so I decided to create a simple tank shooter. Because, you know, tanks are fun. Each player will be sitting at their machine and both will be controlling one tank. The game will consist of rounds, with each round being won by the player who managed to successfully shoot down the other one. First player to win 10 rounds wins the game. Simple enough. So, let's get programming and let's start with the Commodore. In its core, it's an incredibly simple machine. There's a CPU and a graphics chip which take turns accessing the RAM. The graphics chip takes the characters it has to print onto the screen from a predetermined location in RAM. So all we have to do is to write our required data to the screen RAM. But wait, the screen is only 40 by 25 characters. How are we going to move tanks around the screen smoothly? Well, that's where sprites come in. The Commodore 64 is capable of what is known as hardware sprites. We can define 8 sprites, which we can move freely over the entire resolution of the screen. So I again misused my cameraman who created these beauties. Aren't they just adorably intimidating? And after adding some keyboard code, we can even move our little tank around. But a tank is no good if it can't shoot its target, so we need to design a highly complicated shot sprite. So that's the Commodore done, and now we need to do the same thing on the PlayStation. And since the graphics are a little more advanced there, I abused another friend of mine to create the tank sprites for that machine, which are a little bit more intimidating, but still adorable. And it was the same story all over again. Load the textures, make them move with a controller and create a way to shoot. There, done. But now comes the hard part. How are we going to connect these two machines together? Well, none of these can connect to the internet. But you know what can connect to the internet? Pretty much every device you own, and that's why this video is sponsored by Atlas VPN. Recently I've been addicted to watching a certain show about a doctor with a cane, but none of the local streaming services allow me to watch it due to regional blocks. Well, Atlas VPN has got me covered, because now I'm in America. Hey, do you use Google? Well, I do. And we all know how Google gets. You mention wanting a cheeseburger near your phone and then you're watching fast food ads for the next two weeks. Well, Atlas VPN can stop this. 
Plus, it can help you save some coins as well by finding the best deals online, be it Spotify or a plane ticket. And you can get all of that for an unlimited number of devices. Grab the big deal, because now Atlas VPN Premium is just $1.83 per month plus 3 months extra, and with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Protect your privacy and get many benefits of Atlas VPN for the ridiculously low price. You can take this deal by clicking the link in the video description below. But be quick, as it's a limited time offer. Now where was I? Oh yes, connection! To achieve a stable connection on such old machines, we have to retreat back into the prehistoric times. Back in the dark, dark ages of no wireless communications and speed so low you can substitute the clock crystal with you clicking a button fast enough. Back then, a serial way of communication was born. And somehow, through all the years, this titan is still standing. And its name is RS-232. But wait, I hear you say, these machines can't do RS-232. Well, I've got this and this. You take this, put it here. You take this, put it there. Then you take that and connect it all up. But where does this go? Well, the PlayStation has got a built-in serial port, but it's not RS-232. So I cut this PSX link cable, which was used back in the time to play multiplayer games, and connect it to this. By the way, both of these boards are basically only a MAX-232 chip, which converts TTL levels to RS-232 levels and vice versa. And for all of those who are rushing to say that I should have wired them up directly since they're both TTL, I say. Sometimes I like to talk to my machines through serial connections, and feeling only 5 volts on your tongue just doesn't cut it. And a fun fact, the cheap link cable I bought from eBay didn't have its 5V line connected, so I had to do some cursed stuff to get it to work. Uh. And yes, I am still completely dumb because I am still using the original power supply even though everyone has warned me not to use it. Yes, I am dumb. But now we've got the camera running, we've got it all connected up with the PlayStation. The PlayStation is connected to this projector because I am, well, dumb. And now if I move the tank... It moves here as well and I can just actually play the game and shoot and stuff. Well, yeah, this... If I had any friends, I could actually play the game, but right now all I can do is, you know, play the game by myself. And that... that I don't have any friends. Huge thanks to my Patreons, especially to Jakob Dansbone, Johan Morganti, RetroReversing.com, Sergio EduP and... Ah! You guys make all of this possible, so thank you very much for supporting me. If you want to support me as well, go into the description down below where you can find my Patreon page. By the way, did you know I have a survival Minecraft server? You can join right now in our Discord, the link is down below. Uh, but for now, if you'll excuse me, I need to go and prepare the next video, so... Bye! Uh, uh.